Hello, this video covers section 13.2 from your text, and we're going to be talking about circles today. Before we get into circles, though, we're going to talk about two formulas, the distance formula and the midpoint formula. And we're going to use the distance formula then to develop a formula or an equation for the equation of a circle. So first, let's talk about the distance formula, and I have a question posed here. How do we find the distance between two points, the first point being x1, y1, and the second point being the ordered pair x2, y2? And if we go ahead and look at this graph here, you see we have the first point on the graph. It doesn't have any numbers associated with it. We're just doing vari using variables to represent the ordered pair. And then here's our second point. And the distance, we're talking about the straight line distance between those two points outlined here in blue and labeled D. And note that we can form a right triangle underneath this blue line. We have a distance here and a distance here, which forms a right triangle. And you may or may not remember the relationship between the sides of a right triangle, but we use what's called the Pythagorean Theorem. Should have talked about that in Algebra 1, hopefully. The Pythagorean Theorem says that if I have a right triangle with legs A and B and a hypotenuse C, then A squared plus b squared equals c squared. Well, notice that in this picture here, the a is kind of like our x2 minus x1, that distance. And the b is kind of like our y2 minus y1. And then the c is kind of like the d over here. So I can use the Pythagorean Theorem to represent this picture on the graph. And what that would look like is x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared equals the hypotenuse d squared. And remember, d is distance. And so we are going to then take the square root of d to get d by itself. And that will give us that d is equal to, because square root undoes squaring, remember? So that the distance is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And this formula for D is the formula that's given in the box down below here. All right, so let's go ahead and apply this. Let's look at this example. Find the distance between the two given points rounded the nearest tenth if necessary. And so we're going to think of this negative 4, 1 point as our x1 and our y1. And we're going to think of the 5 as our, y, as our x2. and the negative 1 as our, or negative 11 is our y2. And then we just plug into the formula. Distance is equal to the square root. x2 minus x1 is going to be 5 minus a negative 4. Squared. And then y2 minus y1 is going to be negative 11 minus 1 squared. We can simplify this a bit. This is going to be instead of 5 minus a negative 4, how about 5 plus 4 squared. And then negative 11 minus 1 is a negative 12 squared. And this is equal to the square root of 9 squared plus negative 12 squared, which is 81 plus 1 
44, which is the square root of 225. And the square root of 225 is, of course, 15. So that's an application of the distance formula. It does not always work out to be a perfect square when you apply this formula. So sometimes you may have to go ahead and, and round like the directions say. This particular example, we didn't have to do that. Okay, next formula. How do we find the midpoint between two points? Not the distance between them, but the halfway point. The midpoint is the halfway point. In other words, if I have, if I go back up to this picture up here, the midpoint is going to be right there. That's the midpoint. Well, notice if this is my distance, my x distance here, the, half, the halfway point is the average of those two points. And then for the distance between the y values, the halfway point is halfway or at the average of the two y points. So that's where this formula comes from. It says the midpoint of a Leiden segment collecting, connecting two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2, is the point whose coordinates are the average of the x's, giving us the x-coordinate, and the average of the y's, giving us the y-coordinate. We know we find the average by adding up to your two numbers and dividing by 2. So for this particular problem, the midpoint is the average of the x's is 4 plus a negative 1 divided by 2 and the average of the y's which is negative 7 plus a negative 3 divided by 2 we can simplify this 4 plus a negative 1 is 3 and 3 over 2 for the x-coordinate the y coordinate, negative 7 plus negative 3, is negative 10. Divide that by 2, we get negative 5. So there's our midpoint. So we are now at the place where you can go ahead and try the first self check problem. It is a problem related to the distance between two points. So go ahead and try number 1, and then we'll come back here in a sec. Alright, welcome back. We are going to go ahead and talk about circles now and let's start with the definition of a circle it says here in this box the circle is defined as the collection of all points ordered pairs x y's in a plane that are a fixed distance that means the distance doesn't change from a point called its center so here's the center of our circle it says the distance from the center to each point on the circle is called the radius of the circle so this radius is that distance from the middle to all points along the outside here and again, that radius distance is fixed. It does not change. So let's go ahead and work towards an equation of a circle. If we graph the circle of radius 6 that is centered at the origin, then we will hopefully be able to come up with an equation for this circle, and in general, an equation for any circle centered at the radius, or with a center at the origin. So the easiest way to go ahead and sketch the graph of a circle is to start at the center and move out a distance of 6 in to the right, a distance of 6 to the left, and also up and down, and then kind of smoothly draw a curve around connecting those points. So if I start at the middle here and I go out 6 units to the right, puts me right here at the point 6, 0. I could also go out 6 units to the left, which puts me at the point negative 6, 0. I could also go 6 units up, which gives me 0, 6, and also 6 units down, which gives me 0, negative 6. Now, 
this isn't going to look perfectly round, but the idea here is to make a nice round curve connecting these points. So if I go ahead and connect them it should look somewhat round again I'm trying to do this by hand so it's not going to look perfect but it's not bad so there's my circle again each point on here and let me just put a generic point in here let's call it some point X and Y should be a distance from the center of six and so why don't we use the distance formula to represent that if this is the origin that's the point zero zero and recall our distance formula distance was equal to the square root of the difference between the x's squared plus the distance between the y's squared and we're going to use two points. We're going to use the point x0, y0, and the point 0, 0. So what I'm saying is the distance, 6, should be equal to the square root of the difference in the x's. That's x minus 0 squared plus the difference in the y's squared. That's y minus 0, meaning that 6 is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. And most of the time we don't leave it in this form. We go ahead and square both sides, meaning that 36 is equal to x squared plus y squared, because we know that when we square, we get rid of the square root. And this equation, x squared plus y squared equals 36, let me write it the other way, is the equation of a circle with radius 6 centered at the origin. Notice that this right-hand side, the 36, that is essentially the radius squared. And so if we go over here and look at this box down below. The equation of circle centered at the origin with radius r is this formula in general. We're just, instead of having a radius be 6, it can be any radius r squared. And so if I wanted to graph, for example, x squared plus y squared equals 12, and wants me to state the center and the radius, we know that any circle that has this form as a center at the origin. So we can say right off the bat that the center is the origin, is 0, 0. I can also talk about what is the radius. Well, if 12 is equal to r squared, then the radius is equal to the square root of 12. Okay, and we can go ahead and come up with a decimal approximation for the square root of 12. If you pull out your calculator, you should see that the square root of 12 is about 3.46, or maybe we could round it to about 3.5 since we're going to try to sketch the graph of this. That means we have a point right here between 3 and 4, and a point right here between 3 and 4, a point right here between 3 and 4, and another point right here between 3 and 4. So if we go and try to graph this circle, we should get a nice, smooth, round curve connecting these four points. We can label this point, 0, square root 12, this is square root of 12, 0, the x value is square root 12, here the y value is negative square root 12, and here the x value is negative square root 12. 
So there's a sketch, sketch of the circle. We know the center is 0, 0. We know the radius is about 3.5. Well, what do we do about circles that are not centered at the origin? Well, it turns out that there's a different formula when, the center, when it's not centered at the origin. And if it has some center that's the point HK, then what we do is we subtract H from the X and square it, and we subtract K from the Y and we square it. And it all, again, this comes from the distance formula. I won't show you the details of that, but it's the same sort of problem that we worked out in the previous example where we used the distance formula to come up with the formula for a circle centered at the origin. So if I wanted to graph this circle right here, x plus 5 squared plus y minus 2 squared equals 16, and it wants us to state the center, I'm saying that based on the equation given, that the center must be at negative 5 comma 2. The reason why that is, is because if you go ahead and plug negative 5 in for h, that ends up giving you an x minus a negative 5, which is x plus 5, which is exactly what we have in our equation. And I'm saying that if you plug a 2 in here, then that gives you a y minus 2 which is what we have in our formula. So you kind of have to think opposite, I guess, of what the equation says. If this says x plus 5, then that means the center is at x equals negative 5. And if this says y minus 2, then the center is at the point that has a y coordinate of positive 2. The radius in this case is going to be the square root of 16, which is 4. And so what we can do is go find the center. We can go over 5 to the left and up 2, find the center here. And then we can go 4 in every direction. We can go up 4 from there. That's the point, negative 5, 6. We can go down 4 from there. That's the point, negative 5, negative 2. We can go to the right 4. That's the point negative 1, 2. And we can go left 4. That's the point negative 9, 2. And we can connect the points. So there's a nice circle with a center at negative 5, 2 and a radius of 4. The very last problem asks us to work backwards. It says find the equation if we're given the graph of a circle. And so first thing we probably want to know is what is the center of the circle. And it looks to me like this is the point 1, 5 is the center. And what's the radius? How far is it to any point on the outside of the circle? Well, it looks to me like if we go over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, one, two, three, four, excuse me. Four digits, four units to the right gives us a point on the circle. So the radius is four. So if I go ahead and apply my equation, y, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. And then I can go ahead and use this formula to find the equation of my circle. So I have x minus h. h is 1 in this case. Remember our circle has the form, has a center, hk. So the h is like 1 squared plus y minus k. And k is 5 squared. And the radius is 4. So this is going to be 4 squared, which is... 16. That's 4 squared. That's r squared. So there's the equation of our circle. Hope that makes sense. All right, now you should be able to do the rest of the self check questions on the back here related to circles.
So go ahead and check those out and we will see you in class. Thank you.